a Craven the Hunter movie is finally on the prowl. Sony has debuted the first trailer for the newest entry in its line of Spider-Man-related films, so it's time to track down all the movie connections and comic nods on this flick's trail. In the comics, Craven powers up with a special herbal cocktail that boosts his physical attributes far beyond normal. While the upper limits of his strength are by no means at Spider-Man's level, he can definitely hold his own against many other super-powered folks strength-wise. Live-action adaptations of comic book characters might not always share the exact power set of their print counterparts. But from the looks of it, Taylor Johnson's Craven will be roughly as fast, agile, and powerful as the comics one. In the trailer, we see him chase a car that's attempting to speed away in reverse, then jump on top of it and tear his way in. The superhuman feats on display seem to be roughly in the same ballpark as the character's traditional powers. And since the trailer also makes clear that Craven has greatly enhanced senses, we just might be looking at a very faithful adaptation, at least in this particular respect. While the trailer suggests that Craven's powers are similar to the comic book version, the way he acquires them seems to be pretty far removed from what fans are used to. Instead of the herbal serum that gives him powers in the comics, the implication here seems to be that Craven gets his power boost from lion blood. As young Craven hunts a lion with his father, he hesitates to fire his weapon, and the animal mauls the boy. As the injured Craven lies on the ground, a drop of the lion's blood falls in one of his open wounds, jumpstarting something that seems to revive him and give him superpowers. An accidental blood transfusion with a large cat seems like an odd origin story, to say the least. It seems that the trailer is deliberately missing a few steps in the process, possibly to avoid revealing major plot points. Or hey, maybe the lion just happens to be radioactive. It's clear from the initial trailer that Craven the Hunter is leaning hard into the family drama element of its titular character's backstory, and it seems his father isn't the only blood relative he'll be at odds with. Indeed, audiences get their first peek at Craven's half-brother Dimitri, a character far better known for his alter ego as Spider-Man's supervillain, the Chameleon. In the trailer, fans learn that the character doesn't approve of his half-brother's brutal quest for justice, indicating that he may have stronger moral fiber than his comic book counterpart. While the trailer doesn't include a look at the Chameleon's trademark skills as a master of disguise, reports from Deadline and other outlets indicates that the character delves headfirst into the persona at some point in the movie. Of course, Craven the Hunter is already dealing with a laundry list of antagonists, so it remains to be seen just how extensive of a role the face-changing villain plays in this film. In any case, viewers would do well to second-guess whether certain characters are really themselves on screen, or if it's Chameleon impersonating them. If there's one Spider-Man villain with an exceptionally spotty track record in cinema, it's the Rhino. This behemoth of a foe has appeared a few times in various movies, with a version portrayed by Paul Giamatti briefly popping up in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and a couple of multiversal variations getting cameos in Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. But audiences haven't really gotten a chance to see the character rise as a legitimate villainous threat. However, the first trailer for Kraven the Hunter indicates that the movie may be giving him a bigger spotlight this time around, along with, on some level, returning him to his comic book roots. The final moments of the trailer introduce audiences to Alessandro Nivola's take on the Rhino. Though viewers don't get to see him go full beast mode, they do witness him activate his powers by way of a self-applied injection, giving him his signature tough gray armor. This sequence shows a Rhino a bit closer to the original comic's conception rather than the giant robot suit that Giamatti wore in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. While while the trailer's rhino tease may have fans chomping at the bit for more, it's wise to temper expectations on how many super-powered shenanigans the character will actually get up to. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Nivola said that he only transforms at the very end of the film. Based on his quote, it seems that this scene may actually come from the film's conclusion, thereby setting a full-fledged rhino up for a Craven the Hunter sequel. Sony's Marvel movies have generally delved into darker and more graphic subject matter than their Marvel Cinematic Universe equivalents, but the films have nonetheless remained firmly rooted in PG-13 territory. That's what made it rather surprising when Craven actor Aaron Taylor Johnson revealed at CinemaCon 2023 that Craven the Hunter would land a strong R rating. Fans may have had their doubts, but the trailer definitively puts any skepticism on that front to rest. Throughout the trailer, audiences see Craven 
Craven take out a number of hired henchmen in spectacularly gory fashion. Throats are sliced, necks are stabbed, and chests are shot through with crossbows. The lead even bites off part of a guy's face at one point, just to really hammer the point home that yes, Craven the Hunter isn't pulling any punches with its bloody brand of violence. Oh, and the trailer shows a young Craven getting mauled by a lion. So toss graphic child peril on the list of definitely not PG-13 stuff in here too. Most movies adapted from comic books alter things here and there to adjust the property from the page to the screen. Sometimes, in the interest of telling a good story, writers and filmmakers will alter the origins or setting of a character. In this case, the writers went a bit further and appear to have fundamentally altered the core motivations of the character. In the trailer, we see that Craven is hunting for one reason. My father puts evil into the world. I take it out. Since this is an origin story, we can assume this mostly occurs before he turns into the brutish hunter, hellbent on catching his most pursued prey, Spider-Man. However, in the comics, Craven is a depraved man beaten in childhood by his alcoholic father, and who, in turn, beats his half-brother. He turns to big game hunting and downs every coveted animal on his list before turning his attention to Spider-Man. Since the superhero represents the animal that haunted his dreams since his mother's time in an asylum, it becomes a personal Personal mission. While there are shreds of that origin represented in the trailer, like his father as a villain, being tormented by spiders, and so on, the film seems to be taking the anti-hero approach to the famous Spider-Man antagonist. Is Craven destined for a showdown with Spider-Man? That remains to be seen, but the trailer for his upcoming solo movie does tease the hunter's obsession with the friendly neighborhood superhero. Toward the end of the teaser, Craven is shown lying on the ground as spiders rush toward him from the trees. The sequence might help to remind viewers that this is a Spider-Man universe movie, but it might also reveal more about Craven's psyche. The scene is clearly done in homage to Marvel's Craven's Last Hunt storyline. This tale chronicles the titular villain's attempts to dispose of Spidey and take his place, and it's widely regarded as one of the best stories in Spider-Man history. Furthermore, the scene in the trailer is a reference to Web of Spider-Man number 31, which features a panel that depicts Craven munching on arachnids as they cover his entire body. Is the Craven the Hunter trailer trying to tell us that this version of the character will also be hellbent on eating Spider-Man down the line? With a piece of Venom symbiote now in the Marvel Cinematic Universe alongside Peter Parker, anything is possible. While it hasn't officially been confirmed yet, seemingly everyone knows that Ariana DeBose is set to play Calypso in Craven the Hunter. However, if there are still any lingering doubts about that fact, the teaser should clear them up. In the comics, Calypso is a voodoo priestess and Craven's love interest. She takes great delight in nurturing his psychopathic tendencies and fueling his hatred of Spider-Man to a troubling extent. So at least they've got hobbies in common. However, if Sony insists on turning Craven into a sympathetic anti-hero for his big on-screen outing, it makes sense to give Calypso a more lighthearted makeover as well. The trailer implies that DeBose's character will be on the protagonist's side, which only lends credence to the rumors that she's playing some version of the voodoo priestess. Furthermore, Calypso often sports a gold necklace around her neck, similar to the one DeBose wears in the Craven the Hunter trailer. While it was impressive when the studio booked Aaron Taylor Johnson for the Craven the Hunter lead, Sony also locked in another compelling name from the indie film realm for a potentially major supporting role in Christopher Abbott. Abbott's role has yet to be confirmed, but rumors abound he's playing Spidey Foe, the foreigner. Perhaps best known for his roles in HBO's Girls and the 2019 miniseries Catch-22, Abbott has also wowed in projects like It Comes at Night, First Man, and Possessor. Craven is undoubtedly his biggest film to date, and if Abbott is playing the foreigner in the blockbuster, he'll no doubt bring something unique to the mix. Fans would probably not call the foreigner a major Spider-Man baddie, but he's probably best known for once being married to fellow mercenary Silver Sable. But minor villains have gotten big movie roles in the past. C-Lister the Spot was the key villain in Across the Spider-Verse, after all. It remains to be seen how big a role the foreigner might play in Kraven the Hunter. After giving a look at Craven's origin, most of the trailer is dedicated to showing how many different people the grown-up version of Sergei can kill. But one element of the character sticking out like a sore thumb is Sergei's manner of speech, because he appears to have an American accent. That shouldn't be the case given that his entire family is Russian, a detail that's been preserved from the comics, as we hear his father speak in a Russian accent multiple times during the first half of the trailer. 
power is about strength. If you show weakness, you will give our enemies an opening. Perhaps Craven was shipped off to a boarding school where one could assume he picked up his American accent? If that's the case, it's unclear whether he was shipped off to the boarding school before or after the accident that gives him his powers. But by the time he's a teenager, Sergei's speech is clearly not with a Russian accent. She died because you sent her away. Craven the Hunter is the next chapter of Sony's Spider-Man-less Spideyverse, so it makes sense for there to be some connections to Venom and Morbius. The trailer does seem to connect to one unseen character first mentioned in the first Venom. A man enters an office to see Mr. Taglin. Unfortunately, Craven's already killed Mr. Taglin and shoots the man with a crossbow. It certainly seems like Mr. Taglin was important. Mr. Taglin? Mr. Taglin? Where's Mr. Taglin? Another Taglin was referenced in Venom. In that movie, Lee Taglin is an employee at Michelini and McFarlane who works with Anne Weying, Eddie Brock's ex fiance This is the law firm that represents the foundation responsible for capturing the symbiotes, one of which was Venom. It's possible that the Mr. Taglin whom Craven killed is the same one who worked with Anne. After all, why focus on the name so much? Or perhaps it's someone who's related to Lee Taglin, or an entirely different person. Either way, a connection certainly seems likely, especially given how often the name is mentioned in the scene.